This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. T. Before we proceed to the video, how about hitting the bell icon to get notified every single time we upload a new video. And hey, you can also check out our playlist on our channel for more awesome videos. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Got it. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I just came back to life after days of illness, so I thought why not choose a topic that is little forgiving for my weak self. So here I am recording a video on this topic today, difficulty in opening the mouth. So you will come across many patients in your clinical life that will complain that they have difficulty in opening the mouth. So what could be the various reasons that a person is unable to open his mouth? We will see today. So we have heard about the term trismus and you know we use this term very loosely saying that it means difficulty in opening the mouth. Trismus, by definition, it is the spasm of the muscles of mastication. So often we use this word as a layman term saying that, you know, whether it's edema or inflammation causing the difficulty in opening the mouth, we say it is trismus. So trismus is usually temporary, okay. But there are cases when you will have permanent limitation of opening, either because of the TMJ problem, that is the temporomandibular joint, or due to scarring of the soft tissue. So these causes can be divided into two types. We have the trismus, that is the temporary limitation of opening of the mouth and we have permanent limitation. So the causes of trismus could be inflammation in and around the TMJ. It could be because of trauma or it could be temporomandibular joint pain dysfunction syndrome or it could be soft tissue infection around the joint or the jaws. Okay, now coming to permanent limitation, it could be extra articular causes or the intra articular causes. Extra articular causes means that is outside the you know articular joint, means not associated with the temporomandibular joint. So these are uh, fibrosis because of burns or irradiation, or it could be oral submucous fibrosis or SMF, or it could be conditions like epidermolysis bullosa in which we have mucosal scarring. Now the intraarticular causes are related to the temporomandibular joint. So we have the congenital ankylosis here, traumatic ankylosis and also ankylosis which is following juvenile arthritis or following pyogenic arthritis or any other causes of enlargement of condyle will be included in this. So now that we know what are the causes of limitation of mouth opening, we can proceed in a further direction. For example, let us say if the patient has a history of tobacco chewing. So this tobacco chewing habit along with the difficulty in opening in mouth, it will give us a hint towards OSMS okay so whenever a patient comes to you and he tells you about this problem difficulty in opening the mouth ask him if the patient has a history of tobacco chewing so this will give you an idea about this condition then on intraoral examination you can find thin white hard bands running vertically just below the buccal mucosa but if this condition is in a very early stage then typically burning of the mucosa and roughness will be there now to find out these conditions which are related to the temporomandibular joint, we will look for evidence of scar or inflammation around the joint and if there is tenderness of the muscles of mastication and clicks or you know any tenderness associated with the TMJ has to be checked and that also includes deviation in the mouth opening. Also the maximum mouth opening has to be checked. Now let me know in the comment section below the normal mouth opening of a person. And I hope you found the video helpful. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.